Hey everybody, welcome to yet another Friday live episode of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Clank, and I'm excited for today's show because I'm just in a really good mood this week. This week has been fun. I've, I've been doing a lot of things. I, uh, I got to stand up and do a webinar last week, or sorry, yesterday, which is something that I love doing and really don't get to do often enough. So I had a lot of fun and I'm hyped up. And in today's episode, I'm going to be giving you kind of yet another one of my classic, uh, <laughs> sorry, not sorry, kicks in the rear end that you might just need. And what we're going to be talking about specifically is I'm going to be suggesting that you need to stop Rube Goldberging your marketing. By the way, I have to be very careful when I say that. I trip up on it every time I say it, but I love saying it, and I just think it's a funny idea. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today, and it's something that I see a lot of people doing and making a mistake with, and so I wanted to make sure that I explained it and kind of put this out there for you. So if you don't know who Rube Goldberg is, I'm going to explain it. You're going to understand it afterwards. Um and we're going to have some esoteric uh, discussions here because I like that. My team has decided that I just love the word esoteric, and I think they're right. And so uh, we're going to have a discussion about that. But it's really going to be actionable. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we dig in, uh, I do have to give you a call to action. And my call to action today is to go grab your ticket for Badass Online Marketing Live. Badass Online Marketing Live is my three-day virtual event happening in December, and the entire purpose of the event is to help online entrepreneurs stop struggling. I want you to stop struggling with, with what it is, and I want to help you build a real business that will last. There's a couple of things there. First, I want you to build a real business, not a product, not a flash in the pan, but an actual business and also one that'll last. And so we're going to be talking about that at the event. But I got to be honest, this is more than an event. It is the virtual event you should be attending this year. Now, if you're watching this live or hearing this today, I'm also going to be going live later today on my page to talk about it because I think it's an important thing to, to, for me to really dive into in depth. But it's more than an event because it's really um, something that will have kind of coaching components to you. We've decided to add something called No Excuses November to get people ready. That'll be live group coaching calls with me, inspiration, all of the things to help prepare you so you don't have to wait until December to get the goodness of uh, Badass Online Marketing Live. And if you happen to join today while this is live, you're also going to get three implementation calls after the event. That's right. I'm going to keep helping people after the event because I want you to implement, not just get the information. So you can get all the details at uh, bobbyclink.com forward slash bomb live. And that's B-O-M live, bobbyclink.com forward slash bomb live. Now with that, let's get to today's episode. We're talking about something that I see a lot. And I said, the topic is stop Rube Goldberging your marketing. And I'm wondering if you're sitting here saying, who the heck is Rube Goldberg and what is Bobby talking about? If you don't know him, you can run a quick Google search and you'll find him. Rube Goldberg was kind of an American cartoonist and satirist, and he was known for a very particular type of cartoon. He would draw these cartoons that showed the most indirect, convoluted way to do a very, very simple task. You could think of some examples if you like the Back to the Future movies. If, if you remember Back to the Future, I think it was in the first episode, like Marty McFly is at, at Doc's house and like an alarm go, goes off, which then causes something to happen, which causes like, a, you know, something to roll, which causes something else to happen, which causes something else to happen. And then I think it eventually feeds the dog. I think that's how it worked. I don't remember. But you also now see videos of this like on social media a lot. I think people probably create them for YouTube, but we see them all over where you watch this thing and, and it's like somebody hits a golf ball, which causes, you know, hits something else, which causes something else to happen. And it kind of goes through all of this process. And five minutes later, it turns on a light. And literally it's this very indirect way to accomplish a very simple task. So that's what Rube Goldberg devices are or Rube Goldberg sequences are. And I wanted to talk today about how way too many online entrepreneurs are doing that with their marketing. They are creating the most complicated, convoluted ways 
to make or to get a simple result. And I, I can think of a couple of different categories I'm going to talk about today. And I want to encourage you to stop doing that. So the first way that a lot of people Rube Goldberg or overcomplicate their marketing is they think they need to be like literally segmenting people into all of these different ways and have all these different paths. And maybe you've seen this, but I will see people who post a, a funnel map. So it's a map of how people are going to go through the different parts of their sequences. And I look at it and I'm like, wow, I need a magnifying glass to understand where those 157 seven different like arrows and lines and all of those things are happening because most times I can't follow it because it's got so much and people are thinking, well, I'm going to segment for this. And if they answer this way, I'm going to go down there. And if they answer that way, I'm going to go up here. And if they're this kind of person, we're going to do that. And then if they do this, we're going to do that, that, and all of this happens and people spend so much time on that, that first of all, they never actually make progress because they're constantly working on this. And second of all, they're worried it's not perfect and they feel like they have to test it all. So they never get to actually launching the thing. And I can think of an example of this, like uh, one of my friends was going to create this quiz and all this. And, and, you know, it was like, we all hear about how quizzes are great and everybody loves quizzes and quizzes are a great way to get people and, and to get leads, etc. Well, the problem is, and I'm going to be honest with you, quizzes that work tend to be in, fall into a couple of different camps, like either they're fun or they really are helping someone discover something about themselves that they really want to discover. The problem is if you don't have a quiz like that, it's not really going to help you. And so this person was going to use a quiz and, and really the purpose was to kind of segment people into a couple of different categories. Like, are they newbies just needed to do these first steps or are they a bit more advanced and they, they need a little bit further step? And I said, well, would they generally know what they need help with? And she said, yeah. So well then just create two checklists, <laughs> literally create two checklists, two different things, and they can pick which one they want. And you don't have to do all of this thing. And that little piece of advice helped her go from like being stuck in like thinking about the quiz and all of the stuff and building that to getting into action, creating the two checklists and basically being ready in a week. And that's the kind of thing that I want to talk about because we oftentimes do this. We think, oh, well, it complicated will make it better. We'll segment, et cetera. And even on my team, there's been some tendency to this because I'll talk about my, um, my lead freebie on the legal stuff side is my free privacy policy template. And after people, you know, opt in to get that, we offer them the opportunity to buy my, like my website legal pack for 27 bucks. Well, we offer them that that's available all the time, but we just make the offer. And then if they buy that, we make a couple more offers to them like you do, right? I mean, why not? But my team was like thinking about all these nurture sequences and emails and all this. And I said, wait, we right now don't have enough people who are taking us up on the $27 offer. I mean, we have some, but we didn't have enough volume. We didn't have huge volumes. We're like tweaking anything happening after that would really matter because you got to have enough people coming through your marketing system, your funnel, whatever it is, or it's not going to be worth it to mess with stuff happening after that. And this was kind of a classic example of even my team worrying about making things complicated when there really wasn't a need to. Now, I want to be clear. Once we get to the point that we have a ton of volume of people taking us up on that $27 offer, I'm going to be all for creating, you know, kind of another thing and, and really working on a nurture sequence for that next phase. But you got to work on the first thing first. And if we had spent time saying, okay, well, we got to get this other nurture sequence done and we got to get this other thing done. And we've got to do all that before we went into action on the first thing, we would be losing so much. So that's one example. And so my general concept to you would be, unless you have thousands of people coming through your marketing funnel, keep it very simple. You don't need to segment. And people ask me that this about email all the time. You don't need to over segment your list. You might need a few different segments, but that's going to be about it because for the most part, you're not going to have enough and spending a bunch of time complicating and, and customizing messages, et cetera, isn't going to be do it. And, and the problem is what happens is we hear about people who are doing this and let's be clear. The old navies of the world should be doing that. 
because they have hundreds of thousands of people they're talking to. If they can segment those people into different places, it makes sense. Target does that with, with like your information. They send you ads that are targeted based on what you've bought. The same thing with your grocery store. For them, it makes sense because they have enough people, but we probably don't. So keep it simple. So that's the first thing. People try to overcomplicate with segmenting and, you know, <coughs> all of these different connections and lines. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting too excited here. Now, the second way that people will mess things up, I would say, and overcomplicate or Rube Goldberg their marketing is they put things in the way that people have to jump over. Basically, they put hurdles that people have to jump over to be able to buy their stuff. And this, we, a lot of us are doing. A lot of us are doing this every single day. And it comes from this notion that, hey, uh, you know, we need to have a launch vehicle. We need to do this. We need to do, and so we, we think, oh, we've got to have this. It's got to be there. And I can think of all kinds of examples where I used to do this. Like I used to, um, well, I mean, let me talk like the first time I truly launched my online genius template library, which if you don't know, that is my all access pass to my legal templates. I did a webinar launch. I basically was making people sign up to come for an hour long training. I think I called it like legal made simple for online entrepreneurs or something, but I was basically saying, Hey, you got to come to this. And that then is like, was the way that I was going to market to people. And then a lot of my uh, friends who were like in my mastermind with me said, yeah, I need your templates, but I ain't coming to that thing. <laughs> and so basically I was putting this hurdle that would stop people who would be ready to buy from buying my stuff. And a lot of people are doing that. And a lot of people are putting up these roadblocks. And again, I yesterday in my training, I, I went on a whole rant, uh, which I believe to my core about how launching is not the best way for most people. And for most people that we need to get rid of the launch mentality at all. But leaving that aside, I just want you to be thinking, are you putting roadblocks in the way? And, and I have another example. It's this, uh, you know, another person I know in the space who, um, she was, she was going to run a live event and the purpose of the live event was to sell into a membership, not an expensive membership, but just, you know, was going to offer people after the live event, uh, a chance to join a membership that she has. And this was the plan. That was the goal of the live event, et cetera. Well, when she starts promoting the live event, she wasn't getting as many signups as she was hoping. So she decided to do a five day challenge. And the idea was at the end of that five day challenge, she would invite people to the event. So this was kind of her idea and she's almost done with the challenge and everybody starts asking her about her membership. Like, how do I join your membership? How do I join your membership? How do I join your membership? And it's kind of funny, like when I was talking with her and there was a couple of others of us there who were kind of steeped in all the marketing stuff. And our first inclination was to do the silly thing of saying, well, you know, uh, you need to sign up for this live event. And, and by the way, that money will be crazy. And then we said, wait, why? People want to join your membership. And the whole goal of the live event is to get people to join your membership. Why not say, hey, you want to join my membership? Here you go. <laughs> and let people join. And again, it's a, it's a perfect example of how sometimes all of us, and there were multiple of us there thinking, and, and as we're talking about it, and it took us a while to say, wait a minute, no. The only reason you're doing the event, I mean, not the only reason, but the reason, the goal is to get people in the membership if people are already ready, let them in, let them buy. And so it's this classic example where I say like, literally we are so steeped in this notion of, of kind of launches and funnels and all these things. And sometimes we get so focused and fixated on those things that all we're doing is putting an obstacle in the way. And it can often happen when we've come up with a plan and we're not quite re ready to pivot. And what I mean by that is, and this is what kind of sometimes drives my team nuts. I don't launch a lot, but what I, what I've decided is kind of what I did. And I was having this discussion with Katie on my team, my integrator yesterday that she's kind of saying, yeah, I mean, managing a launch with you is different than any other launch I've ever tried to manage with anyone else. And the reason why is most people that she had worked with or has worked with in the past, literally it's like they have a launch plan in advance and they just execute it. And, and there's no kind of pivoting. There's no kind of like feeling the flow of things. And what I suggest is when you're doing that, oftentimes you're going to be overcomplicating things because you're not sensing and reacting to what's happening in your launch.
or in your sales or in your promotion or whatever. Whereas what I'm doing constantly is I have an outline in my head for what I'm going to do for a promotion, but then I sense and react. I look at it and I say, well, what's happening? What are people saying? What should I change? Should I change something? Let me think about it. Um, and I'm going to give you a very, very simple example of this. And it happened yesterday. I was doing this training and just so you know, the training I did yesterday at the end, I made an offer for people to join me at my live event. And so I made this offer and, and it's kind of annoying. I do slides in, uh, most of my slides are in Keynote. And if you've ever used Keynote, when you're in presenter mode, you can't see anything else. You only see your slides. So I couldn't see any of the chat happening during the event. Well, I get off and I get into chat with like my team and like I'm seeing, like someone said something like, you know, the consistent theme is why do we have to wait? Why can't we have it sooner? And so I went and I went into Demio and I just read the chat and I found they were right. That was what people were saying. Like, I don't want to have to wait till December. I don't want to have to wait till December. And so that's where the idea for, I mentioned it at the beginning, no excuses November came from. I said, Hey, they want it. Sure. We'll add something and help them in November, get them a head start. Why not do it? Let's serve the heck out of my people. But again, that's an example where I saw what people wanted. I said, boom, done. And we, and we made the decision and did it. And I use that. That's not about complicating or overcomplicating, but it's an example of what you need to do is be listening to your people and give them what they want and make it that simple. Figure out what they want, listen to what they're saying they want and give it to them. And, and that's what we should be doing in our, in our marketing. And again, here's where we maybe get a little bit esoteric. If you're not someone who likes science, there's a concept known as Occam's razor, which generally stated says this, for the most part, the simplest solution is generally the right one. In other words, it means like if you're trying to figure out like, you know, if people are thinking about esoteric scientific things and, and coming up with things. Yes, maybe you could come up with a very convoluted art, you know, chain of events that leads to something. But if there's a direct line that makes sense, the direct line is probably what it is. And we should apply that same thing in our marketing. What is the most direct line I can take from where I am to giving people what they want and having them buy from me? And oftentimes it's simply listen, hear what they want, offer it to them, and they will buy. I know it's weird to hear that, but that often is it. And instead we complicate things. We, we, we say, well, we've got to have a funnel and we've got to have a launch. And we've got to do this and we've got to have all these segments and we've got to do all that. Instead of simply saying, what do people want? Can I just give it to them and then doing it? And I'm going to suggest to you that what we are often doing, and everybody does this, but in the online space, especially because we have been kind of indoctrinated with this notion of, you know, uh, launch vehicles and all funnels and, and segmenting and all of that stuff. And candidly, what's happening is a lot of like the worst, not the worst, but the most complicated parts of very complex marketing are being brought down. And they don't apply to us because our business isn't ready for it. But also we're doing all these other things. So we, we build up this nearly impossible horrible way of trying to market rather than simply saying, huh, my people say they want this. Hey, do you want this? Sure. Here you go. You can buy it. <laughs> and I'll just tell you, if, if you stop doing that, you're going to have better results and it'll also be more fun because making this stuff complicated is just causing your, yourself a lot of headaches. Keep it simple. Stupid is one of my mantras. And I'm going to suggest you do it too. So call to action, quit Rube Goldberging your, uh, Rube Golding your, Goldberging your marketing, and instead find the most direct way, not the most indirect way to get the result you're wanting. That's it for this episode. I'll see you again in the next one.